Good morning, traders and investors. Roger Scott here, Senior Strategist for WealthPress. It's Tuesday. It's August 1st. It's about 7.37 in the morning. The market's going to open up in a little bit less than two hours. Got a lot to talk about today. Now, before we begin, you guys know the routine. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube WealthPress channel. Make sure to like our videos. Make sure to subscribe to our Telegram channel. Just go to rogerscott.com forward slash Telegram. Get free trade picks, pictures of my cats, and good setups. And most importantly, I've opened up my VIP room for the summer for free, no cost. It won't cost you a penny. It's happening at noon today, Eastern time. Not at 11, not at 10, not at one, at noon Eastern time. You should have a link above or below this video. If you're on Telegram or if you're subscribed to our website, you should be getting links to those. Now, before I end the session today, I'm gonna give you not one, not two, not three, I'm gonna give you four day trading stocks today, four. Now I know some of you are not day traders, but if you are, these are at the end of every video or most of the video, I'm assuming you guys still want me to do this. I'm giving you two to three to four day trading stocks, my favorite day trading stocks for today. Uh, again, all the way till the end of this video, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. Now let's begin. Uh, the Nasdaq's down about 58 points, 57 points. The Dow's down about 50. Now this isn't anything uh, miraculous or anything uh, really negative. But we've been seeing a very, very strong bull run for quite some time. Let me just show you something. It's been, I mean, look at this. We've been going straight up from 310, and now we're in seven. We've been going straight up for about three to three months, three to four months. And right now, if you look at the Dow, at the S&P or the Dow, it doesn't really matter what you look at, you could see that we're getting towards really strong resistance levels. Now, if we can break these levels, it would be great. But honestly, honestly, after such a strong uh, down, after such a strong upside, and you have a reverse head and shoulders pattern here, you got the head and you got the shoulders right here. You have the the neckline. I think I think this is too much, too fast, and I think we're going to start reverting down. Now, not just the large caps. Look at the Russell 2000. Look at where we're at right now. We've gone to this. We've been at this area already since for a year a year and we haven't been able to break out and look at momentum level on the russell that's the number of stocks above the 50-day line that's the two year look at five years what happens every time we come up here it doesn't go that much more right so we could go a little higher but i mean we could go a little higher but <clears throat> honestly i'm just not seeing the catalyst now we haven't had earnings for small caps just yet that may change my opinion but uh, and there's plenty of liquidity because we're we're investors are buying up the small caps right now but be very careful because once we go just a little bit above this it looks like momentum tends to run out of uh, uh, just runs out basically now we have a lot of earnings today most of the earnings are after the market closes you've got AMD you got Pfizer you got Starbucks you got Caterpillar you got Merck you got uh, Norwegian Cruise Line you got Uber you got Devon Energy these are the biggest stocks that are reporting you've got a lot of others a lot of others but these are the big ones so as you could see here norwegian cruise line uber and amd they have an expected range of around eight percent that's quite a bit pfizer blue chip stock has only 3.7 but these stocks are going to shape the market today and this fed data including construction spending manufacturing and jolts it's happening right after the market opens keep your eye on that now um, as i mentioned the other day i think the bond market i mean th there's really no reason for the bond market to cool off right now unless fed data kept coming in way way better than expected which means the fed has a green light to keep raising rates i don't think that's going to be the case and i think we're going to bottom out around here the rsi sure believes that uh the two-day rsi but again the trend the long-term trend as you could see here has been going down we have been consolidating since let's see here wow Whew, where's this year gone? almost i mean look at this like we're talking about eight, nine months. We've been in this range right here. So I think we're gonna get out of this range, but I'm not, I don't think the market's ready to break down. Um, I don't think yield is ready to go higher just yet. I think we, we, we need to wait and see. So I think we may get a, a turn back up to the 103 level. But again, I would only trade this to the downside with the direction of the main trend. Um, and again, you're gonna see a lot of broad market exposure, like for example, semiconductors, healthcare, consumer discretionary, um, industrial, healthcare, consumer discretionary i guess uber is consumer discretionary and energy so you're it's a very broad the earnings are becoming a lot more broader and tomorrow you've got healthcare or consumer stocks uh, consumer stocks healthcare stocks 
uh, consumer stocks, energy stocks, Heinz, consumer staples, uh, Etsy. So a little bit of everything. Look at the implied volatility. They're expecting an 11% move on Etsy and 10 on, on uh, Hood. Big, big and Shopify 10.6%. So again, we're going to know if if AMD has uh, keep your eye on the chip stocks today on semiconductors. If AMD has really good news, we may get a rally up here. We're we're still looking very very strong, and I would love to see a breakout. But again, we're at these levels right now where it's really hard to see a major major move. Now let's talk a little bit about global economy, and then I'll get into the nitty gritty with you. Market participants digested weak Chinese and Eurozone manufacturing data. That's not good. That's bad, bad for global economy. Energy stocks, remember, don't give up on energy stocks in an inflationary environment. They're at a three and a half month high. It looks like energies are in play once again. Uh, Goolsby stated uh, yesterday that the data, yesterday, yeah, yesterday, that the data indicating slower U.S. inflation is fabulous. However, he has not made a final decision on whether to support pausing rate hikes at the next policy meeting. We'll get several major data points before the next meeting. They're just waiting right now. They're waiting. There's an 81% chance that they're not going to take action, that they're not going to take any action, which is actually really good for the bond market for to see it go a little bit higher. Let's see if this number increases or decreases as the earnings and news continue to, uh, to come out. Earnings, Merck, Pfizer, AMD, Caterpillar, and Starbucks. Here's some good news. Uh, so analysts are expecting 6.4% year over year. They were expecting 7.9 a week ago. So it kind of went, it started off going lower, and now it's coming higher, I guess because of the tech stocks. But this is very positive. The estimates are now coming out better than expected. So they're coming up. They were going lower, now they're going higher. That's really good because we didn't see that last quarter. Today, we're going to be looking at manufacturing survey, job openings report. That's going to be big. Now, Europe, weak Eurozone manufacturing data and some disappointing earnings weighted on sentiment. Losses in automobile consumer product stocks are leading the overall market lower. Data released on Tuesday indicated that Eurozone manufacturing activity contracted in July, experiencing the most rapid decline since the beginning of COVID, primarily due to decreased demand. Folks, that's that's horrible for our economy. Uh, China erased earlier gains close flat following the release of data indicating a slowdown in home sales and manufacturing. Very, very bad. Remember, that's our biggest export, second biggest economy. Nikkei close higher, uh, rallied in automobile technology stocks. Data on today showed that manufacturing activity also contracted, impacted by soft orders amid weakening global conditions. You just can't get away from that uh, you just can't get away from that. Now, let's get into the nitty gritty. Looking at the nitty gritty, you could see here on the short term scan, if you look at the six weeks average, right? That's the six weeks right here. Energy's leading and small caps, communication, basic material. If you look at three weeks, energy, communication, small caps, material. If you look at the last week, energy second, basic materials uh, third, and communication services is first. Looks like tech really rallied at the expense of everything else. And if you look on the weakest sector, you'll see it's real estate. You could see here real estate is also really, really weak in utilities. And over the last week, real estate is still weak. So I would say the strongest sectors are energy, basic materials, and, re and the weakest is real estate. So let's take a look and look at our uh, CSI scan and see what we could find. Let's just take a quick look here. Let's see what's 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 cooking. So right away, let's just let's just cut through the the the, the noise. Let's see, Evergy, that's a energy stock. Carnival, Meta, look at all these stocks are rallying like crazy. I think we're going to see more upside if the news comes out good today on RCL. I think this is a runaway gap right here. We can get a little more upside. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I should be talking about other stuff though. So let's see, where's all the money? Where's all the money now? Look at technology. It's been just going crazy the last week. Um, so here, here's a basic, here's, here's a, uh, an industrial stock, GE. One of my favorite stocks right now. I love the stock right now. Um, look at all this consumer discretionary. So Quanta, really good stock right now. P M P W R Power Quanta and G E. Now, what about what about tech stocks? Well, I got to be honest with you. I kind of like uh, C R M right now. I love Carnival, and I love Royal Caribbean. 
Uh, Tesla's not looking bad either. All of these are in the top, 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 top. But I, I'm, I'm, I want to look a little bit beyond, um, beyond technology. That's why I like, I like these stocks right now that are breaking up. Like, uh, like I told you, you got GE, you've got uh, power, and you got monolithic power systems. FedEx is looking pretty good here too. Um, again, that's that's the long side. To the short side. To the short side, let's see here. Let's see what looks really, really nasty. Let's see what looks really bad here. Okay. I'll tell you what I would sell right now. I would be selling Verizon. And it's so broad right now, so broad see here and utilities northern utilities the short side be careful right now because the market's really hyper bullish but at least you have some good long-term plays I want to see a really strong rally to take advantage of the short stocks and I'm not seeing it right now I mean just technically speaking uh, Crown Castle still looks like it can go down this EPAM looks like it can go down and Campbell Soup looks like it can still go down quite a bit. It doesn't look like it wants to go up at all. General Mills isn't doing well. Consumer staples are just not hot right now. Here, this one right here. Here's a good one. Market taxes holdings. I like this upside. I think it's going to come down from about 274 to about 244. So overall, keep your eye on earnings and Fed data, especially earnings. They're going to really be moving the market today. Now, are you guys ready for me to give you those uh, those four day trading stocks? Let me give them to you. AMSC. The stock is up 64% this morning. That is going to be a good day trading stock, probably for reversals, not a breakout, but that's a good day trading stock. Tupperware. Um, it's it's a second big day. It's It was up 38% yesterday. It's already up 30, 23% this morning. Next one is QBTS. The stock is up 30% this morning, and it looks like it's starting to really make a move. These are big, big day trading stocks. And last but not least, Rigetti Computers up 20% already. These are great stocks to either uh, catch on a breakout to the upside or to the reversal as they come down because they're up 50, 60, 70%. So I'll be talking about more of them in my VIP room if you're interested. Uh, if you like this segment, let me know leave a reply in the YouTube Wealth Press channel. Tell me you want me to continue doing this segment. I want to know if there's people that are interested in day trading here because small caps are really rocking and rolling and liquidity is coming into it right now. So let me know. Comments, post in the video, and I'll, I'll respond. Now, folks, are you, are you looking to become a more confident trader and ready to take your skills to a new level? I mean, look, look at my shirt. All I think about is candlesticks. <laughs> of course you are, just like I am. That's why you're here, right? Join me today, early 10 a.m. Eastern time for my crash course on the M spike. It's a unique pattern that can be found on any stock chart and it oft often signals that a price surge in a particular stock is imminent. Don't you wanna know when a surge is imminent? And you'll learn exactly how to spot and trade it after a free bootcamp. You're gonna love this. I'll teach you the ins and outs of the M spike using real time examples and I'll give you proven strategies, yes, proven strategies tailored just for that chart pattern, all at 10 a.m. this morning, Eastern time. Click the link below, check it out. Remember, VIP room, no cost, noon today. The link should be there as well. Let me know if you like these day trading picks. Bye, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.